I'm terrible at this and I will probably never do one of these ever again because I'm bad at it. Oh, why is there a bunch of- oh, wait, this is so fun. When I say this isn't going well, that isn't safe, dude. <gasps> guys i am going to be making kind of a reading vlog situation for rereading the hunger games trilogy in preparation for the next book coming out in may so today is april 24th and i'm starting the book today and i realize that it is a bit late to be starting the book considering that the new book is coming out in like three-ish weeks so I'm gonna give myself like a week to finish each book honestly it'll probably take me less time but I'm, I want to be prepared in case something does come up like schoolwork or something so I'm really excited to reread this honestly <laughs> the first time I read it was fifth grade or fourth grade I don't remember which was gosh ten, over 10 years ago or I don't know it was a long time ago, and I have not reread them since, which is odd because The Hunger Games was like my absolute favorite thing in elementary and middle school, the start of middle school. I had posters, I had t-shirts, I had the freaking pin, I had, <laughs> it was obnoxious, I had trading cards I'm pretty sure. It was just very a lot. It was it was a lot. I have not reread it since the first time that since I initially read it. So I'm going to be doing a reread, which I'm slightly nervous about because what if I don't like it as much as I did the first time I read it? That's a real fear. I don't remember much that happened in the book because I read it so long ago. Like mostly what I remember is from the first book. And then after that, I don't really remember anything from Catching Fire and Mocking Jay. I don't even remember how the series ended. So it's going to be interesting to reread it. And I'm going to try to finish them before the next book comes out. Which I can't remember the name of to save my life. It's like Serpents and Songbirds. But I can't remember. Is it Snakes and Songbirds? Is it Not Songbirds? Ballad? I don't know. Put all of those words together and you'll probably get the title at some point. So I'm going to be vlogging-ish my experience of rereading them. I I'm hoping it'll be nostalgic and like, wow, this was good. <laughs> I'm afraid it's gonna be like, wow, I remember this and it's not as good as I remember. But it's such a classic, you know? It's like becoming a classic. So I think it'll be fine. <laughs> I think I'll love it just as much. From my memory of it, it was one of the first books with a female lead character who was this kind of empowering. And it, it was for sure the first book that I read that was a female main character who was like a hero kind of character. Like, you know, obviously there were books where there were female main characters, but it was not in the same way that is portrayed as a hero. And so I think that was one of the most revolutionary things about this book is that there was a female lead in such an empowering role. And I remember finding that super empowering when I first read it. So I'm probably going to start it today. I'm really excited. Yeah, I mean, I don't really have anything else to say. I'm going to be popping back on once I get to a part where I think I have something else to say, as one does when making a reading vlog. So I really hope you enjoy. Feel free to comment your thoughts if you reread the series i've heard some rumors about the book being adapted the new book being adapted as a movie tell me your thoughts on the movie your thoughts on the trilogy and it getting a prequel after so many years tell me all of your thoughts i genuinely want to hear i have looked at the title so many times and committed it to memory and then immediately i forget immediately within five seconds i forget every single time we'll see that's but you know what my goal is not only to read the books but to memorize the title of the new book <laughs> that is my goal every single time i pick up the camera to like say my thought i have to that's 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 the rule i have to say the title of the new book <laughs> to the camera and then we'll see by the end of the video if i remember it that is my new goal yes and if I don't memorize the title at the end, should there be a punishment? Okay, you know what? I feel like it's unreasonable to think that I won't memorize the part of this video. But if I don't, 
I don't know. That's just a do- I think I have to quit YouTube and Bookstagram if I can't memorize the title of the book by the end of this video. That's the deal. I have to quit. <laughs> okay. I will see you soon when I have something more to say. Okay. Hello. Today is April- I almost said August. Today is April 26th. It's Sunday. I haven't read since I last filmed. But- I, I mean, I have. But I mean the- the, the days in between the last film. I don't even remember what day it was. Friday? Saturday? I don't know. Um, I haven't read The Hunger Games, but I did today. I read up to chapter 9, so I'm 30% of the way through. I'm definitely gonna read more tonight. I almost forgot. I have to say the name of the <laughs> book, and I just looked it up. It's The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. Serpents? I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm never gonna get it. I'm never gonna get it. I'm telling you. I'm gonna look it up again. <laughs> I don't remember. I am loving it so much, rereading it. I was super worried, like I said, that I wouldn't love it as much as the first time I read it, but it's really not a problem at all. I am enjoying it just as more. I don't know more, but like the same amount probably. I don't remember how much I enjoyed it at this point in the book last time, but I'm having a really great time reading it. So, yes, I'm on chapter 9, about 30% of the way through. I love Katniss. I forgot how great of a character she is. And she's probably one of my favorite characters of all time, and I just have never- I've so neglected her as a character. She's so great. There's just so many, like, plot twists that, like, you just never see coming, you know what I mean? Like, there's just so many things that just, like, happen at, out of left field, and you're like, I didn't even think about- I didn't even think about seeing that coming. I didn't even- I didn't even think that I should ponder that. You know what I mean? It's just so great. I'm looking up the name now. The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. Okay. We- we got there. We did it. So, that's how I'm feeling right now. I'm feeling nostalgic. I'm feeling like I'm having a great time. <laughs> I'm also really tired. Definitely gonna try to get in like probably to 50% by the end of the night. Yeah, I'll see you soon for another update. Okay, I am on my floor currently because I realized that my hand, I'm like, the, it's like shaky when I do it with my hands. It's a lot of movement. So I thought I would film on my floor with this propped on my bookshelf today. So yeah, so. It's the 28th, T Tuesday, 28th. Wait, I have to say the title of the prequel. The Ballad, okay, here's my guess. The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. That's my guess, that, that's the title. <laughs> because it really is a guess at this point. The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. I think that's it. I don't know, I don't feel like checking right now, so in the editing I'll check, but okay. My thoughts on The Hunger Games are as follows. I'm having a great time. I think I might be loving it more than the first time I read it. I've flown through it and it's only getting better. It's odd because it seems like the concept of it doesn't inherently seem like something that I would enjoy as much as I am. And so I think that really attests to the writing of it and the characters and development and stuff. So I'm having a great time reading it and I'm really excited to continue with the series and hopefully I enjoy Catching Fire and Mockingjay as much as the first one. Although, honestly, it'd be hard to beat. <laughs> but yeah, I'm really glad that I picked this up again. Hey guys, so I'm gonna sit on the floor again because that's just what this day has been. So this video has turned out to be disastrous. It is May now. It is May like 3rd or second, one of those days. I don't even know anymore. I've continued reading, but I just haven't interacted. So I finished The Hunger Games and I loved it. I thought it was amazing. I'm gonna, I finished The Hunger Games and I loved it. I gave it five stars. It was better than I remembered, honestly. I love Katniss. I think she's such a good character. I think she's so like, we like forget how good she is, I feel like. I have to say the thing, I have to say the thing. A ballad of serpents and songbirds is what i'm going with i'm not gonna look it up right now because that's just too much <laughs>
but I think it I think the name of the book is a ballad of serpent and songbirds a ballad of serpents and songbirds I think that's it I'm gonna go I'm gonna say I'm correct I have started catching fire and I'm about 100 pages in so far I'm, I haven't really I haven't I haven't remembered any of the things that have happened like everything has been like I'm reading it for the first time which is really cool and really nice because I don't really like rereads when I just like know everything that's gonna happen I'm hoping to finish it in the next like two or three days it is like the end of the semester so I have like five papers due in the next week so it has been a little bit hard to squeeze in time to read for fun and then I'm gonna start a Mockingjay I haven't actually ordered the new book yet I should do that too it's so expensive on Amazon it's like $16 and like you think I have $16 just low? I'm a friggin' college student. I have literally like 13 cents in my bank account, okay? <laughs> I'm gonna get, I'm, I'm gonna get it either way because I have a spending problem when it comes to books. And we all know that. I also watched the movie. I rented it on Amazon and <laughs> I didn't like it. I remembered more of the movie than I, than I thought I did. And I remember like pretty like enjoying it when it came out, but like my experience with watching book to movie adaptations is never positive. I do not like book to movie adaptations ever. <laughs> I've still have yet to find one that I enjoy. I mean, Harry Potter's close in the Grand Sea Litter and Potato Peel Pie Society, but like I hardly ever enjoy a book to movie adaptation. And so it was not surprising to me that the hunger games was not a good movie in my opinion and i know there's people who like it so this is also my opinion just putting that out there i'm not saying you can't like it you can like it but i don't <laughs> i just thought it was so cringy at some points like i don't know i just oh it's kind of cringy in my opinion i forgot how and i'm gonna say spoilers because i'm i'm sure if you're watching this then you've probably read the books and if not i'm gonna say spoilers i and i'll put a timestamp when i'm not saying spoilers anymore i had totally forgotten that the uprising started in catching fire i know that like the the quarter quell like cat and Peter have to go back into the games but i don't remember why i know they use like old victors but i can't remember the exact like does that happen in catching fire does that happen in mocking tree i don't remember so that's kind of where i'm at right now that's the last thing i remember i remember the last line of catching fire too but i won't say it just in case because i when i first read it i like flipped to the end of the book and read the last line like what an idiot i don't know why i did that and it's like a hugely shocking like statement and it ruined the entire book for me. So, I'm a disappointment. <laughs> but, it's okay. It's okay to be a disappointment sometimes. I have to go write a paper now. So, bye for now. Probably for another week. Like, I would ever have the responsibility to film in an orderly fashion. Thank you. I'm currently outside of my house, waiting for to go social distance walking, quarantine life. So I thought I would say a couple things. First of all, it's been a very long time since I have interacted in this regard. First of all, the ballad of song Brits and Snakes. Nailed it, said the title, and I'm pretty sure I got it right. My dogs are outside, so if you hear weird mouth noises, it's them. Okay, update on where I am in my reading journey. I'm on page 265, I think, of Catching Fire, which is like the beginning of the third section. And honestly, I'm enjoying it so much. I, I forgot how much I enjoyed this series. It is definitely, like, this rereading it has only confirmed, oh wow, look at that. Oh, this is my favorite series of all time such a classic so good i'm gonna say some spoilers so if you haven't read it like skip ahead best parts of the book when katniss's wedding dress turns into a mockingbird mocking jay chills literal chills when peter says that they're pregnant so good when cinna dies my gosh the woman is just a genius with words Susan Collins, I mean. In conclusion, I'm probably gonna try to finish Catching Fire today. 
and start Mocking Jay. I ordered the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. Is that the title? Maybe. Oh my gosh, I just saw something else. When Katniss hangs the dummy and writes Seneca Crane on it. Katniss is my hero. She's my favorite female character. No, no, no questions. <laughs> and I love her with my entire heart. I, I she, she was such, she was the first female fictional role model of my life. And I, that's just... So it comes out the 19th, but because of shipping delays and everything, it's supposed to get here on the 25th. So I do have a quite a bit of time in between to read, to finish Catching Fire and start Mockingjay. But I do have an audiobook that expires soon that I've been waiting like six weeks for. So I want to make sure that I get I make time for that because I have been waiting a really, really long time for that. And I do want to get to it. Um, as well as I have some other things, uh, other books that I'm working on at the same time. I just finished the semester. So I have like an abundance of free time now and I'm very excited about it. And yeah, that's pretty much it for right now. I'll probably film again when I'm actually reading the book. I don't think I've ever filmed while I was reading the book and that's insane for reading vlog. I'm terrible at this and I'll probably never do one of these ever again because I'm bad at it. I'm like, oh my gosh, there's a bee. Oh my gosh, my dog's chasing a bee. That isn't safe, dude. <gasps> Update, the bee is gone. Everything is safe, I hate bees. I hate all bugs. What was I saying? Hopefully this audio works. There's lots of wind. So it could not. We don't even know. <laughs> anyway. See you soon. Hello. I'm back on my floor. So today is the 19th. I know that because it's the day that the Ballad of... I'm gonna say it. The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes? Did I get it? I don't know. But it's the day that it comes out. I do not have it because my pre-order is not supposed to come until the 25th because of the like shipping delays and stuff. I'm thinking that it's probably like an exaggeration because I feel like Amazon does that a lot. They'll be like, oh, it's coming this day, but it'll end up coming a couple days before. So that's what I'm hoping. <laughs> I have finished Catching Fire. I finished it a couple days ago and I loved it. I just love this series so much. I was thinking like this is probably my favorite series. Like what my favorite if one of my favorite if not my favorite series of all time because it just it, it not only is just like amazing but also like the nostalgia of it is just I don't read a ton of series so it's not like impressive. <laughs> I get well no it is impressive but it's not like whoa like I don't read a lot of series to begin with so but today I'm beginning Mockingjay I had to wait a couple days because I had some other things to do and some other books to finish up and this is the very last minute I'm hoping to finish Mockingjay as soon as possible so that I can prepare myself for the prequel I forgot originally that today is the day the book came out and I forget that people have it and so I, I know how I said I'm not going on Goodreads, I'm not going on Instagram. I went on Goodreads and I saw somebody's thoughts and I didn't mean to. It was just, it was there and I read it. I'm not going to say what they are, but I'm disappointed in myself. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, I am not going to be looking at anything regarding the book. I'm going to stay off Bookstagram and Twitter and Goodreads as much as I can the next couple days and we're gonna see what happens when I actually get the book. Hopefully it's before the 25th. Hopefully. Okay, okay, quick opinion. So I was really upset at first when I was reading Catching Fire because I like knew what happened. I knew they go back in the game. By the way, like spoilers. I knew that they go back into the games for the quarter quell. Like that is something really difficult to forget. But when it actually happened in like Caddis's reaction, I was like super moved by it. I was like, man, that really sucks that she has to go back in. And I kind of felt that it like cheapened. Like it felt like a repeat, a repeat of the first book. You know what I mean? And I was kind of like, that's kind of a cheap shot to just like repeat the same thing that happened in the first book. And I felt that way for a really long time. But then when I like reading it more, I actually felt like it was, it, it, I, I, I take that opinion back. <laughs> I was like really moved by it and like I think that there was other ways that it could have happened but it seemed like realistic almost like that is something that the president would do if he was trying to kill Katniss you know what I mean so like I don't know I I, I went into it not really th thinking that like Catching Fire would be kind of a dud like you know how there's like a dud in every series like Allegiant but it was not it was not I was wrong 
I was just looking for a dud. I don't think there's gonna be dud in this series. I, I remember liking Mockingjay the least when I read it originally, but I'm not, I'm, I'm not gonna think that going into it because it's not giving it a fair chance, number one, and number two, I'm probably gonna be wrong. I'm probably gonna enjoy it just as much as I enjoyed the other two. I'm gonna hop into that now. I will let you know my thoughts probably when I'm finished. I'm not gonna be like, oh, I'll let you know later today or I'll let you know tomorrow because that won't happen because look at the sun, wow. Because I never do that. So yeah, I'm going to let you know the next time that I film. Okay, hello. So today is May 22nd. I don't remember the last time I filmed. <laughs> I think it was like earlier this week, I don't know. But I want to do a quick update. I'm currently on page 280 page 280 of Mockingjay I received now listen people <laughs> I can now see the title of the new prequel from where I sit so I don't need to guess it anymore the ballad of songbirds and snakes I think that's what I've been saying right anyway I'm, I'm enjoying Mockingjay. I'm definitely not enjoying it as much as Catching Fire or The Hunger Games. It feels, like, just so different now that Pete is, like, wacky. <laughs> Honestly, like, so much is happening that I have no memory of whatsoever. Like, Boggs as a character, no memory of him at all. And he's, like, a pretty main character. I have no memory of them, like, going through those, like, simulation, like, block things. I have no memory. Like, right now I'm at the part where they're, like, going through the street and, like, they're... There's, like, they're trying to get the film thing, and then, like, Bog's legs get blown off. No recollection that that ever happened. In the hollow, he, like, transfers the hollow to her, and then Peter starts going wacky, and he starts trying to kill her. Never happened in my mind. That never happened. I've never read that before. <laughs> it's so weird. I have no recollection of that, whatever. I have no recollection of them going to the Capitol and, like, camping out and, like, playing that, like, real or not real game with Peter. I have no recollection, no rec recollection, but I don't really remember, like, how this book ends, so that's probably why, <laughs> like, I remember the very ending, but I don't remember what happens, like, in between, like, the last thing I remember and, like, the end, so that's fair, so I'm excited to finish it, I don't think, I don't like it as much as Catching Fire, but I never did, even the first time I read it, I remember not liking it as much, so this is pretty much what I expected, but then it's time for Ballad of Songbird Snakes, and, okay, I've seen two people's thoughts on it by by accident, and I, I'm not gonna say what they are because I don't want it to influence, but like, what have, we all know what happens when an author releases a book from a series, like, many years after it was first released. It's been like, what, 12 years? When, when was Mockingjay released? Let's see. Like, I'm gonna guess, I'm gonna guess like 2012, no, 2010. 2010! Ayo! So it's... 10 years after oh wait i can do this so i'm not so shaky so it's about like 10 years after it is 10 years after mockingjay was released and we all know what happens when you do that it's the same thing that's gonna happen to stephanie Meyer when she releases the new twilight book it's like when cassandra clare continued the mortal instruments after the perfection that was city of glass and then she came out with city of fallen angels and that was trash so in conclusion i I'm very nervous to read it, especially right after reading The Hunger Games and having such a, like, high, having such, like, a very good experience with reading these three books. And then having to read the prequel. I'm not saying it's gonna be bad, but, like, I, I knew before, even before seeing other people's thoughts about it, going into it, I knew that there was a very good chance that I, it wasn't going to be good. And it's long. Okay, but also, hear me out about this. Hear me out about this. I know we're all excited because it's President Snow story and we're like, wow, we're t telling the story of the villain. Whoa, we're going to sympathize with the villain. Whoa. I want a book that focuses on Hamish's story. Hamish is such a cool character. He's literally one of my favorite characters. He's so underappreciated, I feel like. And like his relationship with Katniss and Peeta in, the ca in Catching Fire is just like, yes. And he's such an interesting character and they talk about him so little for what a main character he is. I would love to hear a story about his hunger. Talk about like the force field thing but I would like to know what he was like before like all that happened. Like what convinced him to do the force field thing? Like he must have known that it would have gotten him punished. Like I don't know. They, they, they talked a lot about him in Catching Fire too like about his time in the game. I would like a full book please Suzanne Collins. Please write a book about, about Hamish please. I don't know. I'm nervous and excited and like I don't know why I'm doing this with my hands. <laughs> I don't know. I'm I'm trying I'm trying to finish Mockingjay tonight. I'm page two eighty and there are Ooh, don't see that. Two ninety 
290. Oh, I have like 100 more pages. I've already read like 100 pages today. I don't think I'm going to finish. But so maybe I'll finish tomorrow. But I'm excited. I'm so excited to start the book, honestly. It's very in a very intimidating length. It's like that length that's like, like, you know how most books are like 300, 350? And then like other books are like 600 to 800. And you're like, wow, that's a big book. And then there's like that just like really intimidating size that's like, 450 and you're like ooh, I'm committing to a kind of a long book but at the same time I feel like I should be able to get through this like that's I don't know how long that book actually is but it looks longer than all of the the, the trilogy not like put together but I mean like any of the singular trilogy books isn't it so pretty I'm so excited that it's like the same style as like the other books and like if you look the chapters are like oh it smells like new book that's wild I like the same design and everything wait i didn't like what it looks like outside Ooh, oh that, oh that is fun that is very fun okay, how many pages is this oh yeah it's like 500 517 so yeah that's like that weird length i mean doesn't it look thick it's a thick boy okay now i don't know if you've read heartless by marissa meyer but i feel like this is going to be a heartless-esque story i'm just saying it here right here right now i think it's going to be he grew up and he was like, I think it's just going to be very predictable. And I'm sorry that I have no faith in this book, but I just don't. But we'll see. I mean, it's got to be 500 pages of something. There's got to be something good in there. Yeah, those are my thoughts right now. Once I finish mocking you, I will record again. And then I will tell you when I'm starting Bell of the Hungry Snakes. By the way, so, so long, it takes me so long to say that title. Bell of the Hungry Snakes. Like the Hunger Games. Catching Fire. Mocking Jay. The, the titles are getting shorter. The Hunger Games. Catching Fire. Mockingjay. The titles are supposed to be getting shorter. And then she comes out with the Ballad of Songbirds. I don't know why I have so many problems with this book. So I will see you soon. But next time you're watching this, I will have finished Mockingjay, which will be like two seconds for you in like a couple of days. Hopefully not a couple of days. Hopefully like either tonight or tomorrow. So yeah. Hey, okay. So I just finished Mockingjay literally moments ago. It is the 23rd of May. I'm actually filming two days in a row, right? Did I film yesterday? I think I did. I finished Rocking Jay, and wow. So I forgot a lot of that. <laughs> I forgot a lot of things that happened in that book. I thought Prim died way earlier in the book, to be honest with you. I thought that happened much earlier. And honestly, I really thought that like Gal and Katniss talk to each other at the end of the book but they didn't and that's so weird that's so weird honestly like she talked to everybody else she talked to Greasy Say but she didn't talk to Gail and she was just such a wreck at the end I just didn't feel very like resolving I didn't feel like it resolved very much that's how final books are in series aren't isn't it I think I'm gonna start that tonight because I just if I don't I never will. I won't because I was excited about it, but you know, it's just so hard to avoid reviews and like, I just, I, I don't know anything about the book. I don't know a single thing that happens in it, but I have seen people's ratings of it, like, <laughs> so I know that if I don't do it now, I will never do it. So... starting it people we're doing it i'm gonna go grab it right now i haven't even read the synopsis i know nothing about this i don't like reading the synopsis because i don't want to know what's going on how do these look next to each other are they the same are they the same height they are those look pretty cool next to each other, honestly. I don't have a hardcover of the, the first book, though. So I only have the second one, the third one, and this one. Honestly, from reading the back where it says ambition, honestly, okay. The back of this is so much cooler than the back of this. I love backs like this, or backs that have a synopsis. Is there anything on the back? Why can't I just finish the sentence I've been trying to say for 20 minutes? Anyway, what was I even going to say? Oh, I don't think it's going to be like the heartless thing that I was saying yesterday, how it's like something bad happens to him, because Bex says ambition will fuel him, competition will drive him, but power has its price. So I feel like he's always going to be kind of like a, like a rough and tough kind of person who's like driven by like his desire for his own success. So 
we're cracking open we're cracking her open there's weird specks on this page cracking it open Crack. there we go <laughs> wait no nope oh why is there a bunch of oh wait this is so fun wait why do i find this fun there's a bunch of quotes in the beginning of it from thomas hobbs john locke jean jacques rousseau william wordsworth and mary shelley is this gonna have enlightenment vibes are we gonna have 13th century vibes wait is that the 13th century no no it's like the 16th century what is my problem are we gonna have 16th century vibes? Because I'm here for it. Oh, the dates are right here. Yeah. Enlightenment vibes. I'm here. Wait, no, that'd be 15th century. Because we're in the 21st century. Are we gonna have 15th century vibes? <laughs> okay. I, that's so fun. Wait, I wanna read the Mary Shelley one because I read Frankenstein and it was amazing. I thought of the pro promise of virtues which he had displayed on the opening of his existence and the subsequent blight of all kindly feeling by the loathing and scorn which his protectors had manifested towards him. Oh, I'm so excited to read this. I'm so excited to read this now. Oh my gosh. Part one, the mentor. Wait, my excitement just boosted by 100%. Oh, he was reaped? He was... Okay, sorry, 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 Okay, I'm gonna go now and I'm gonna read it. It's gonna be great. So excited. Okay, bye. Okay. Hello. Today is the 25th of May. And we're talking about this. I'm gonna have a, like, word, the word spoilers. And it's gonna be on the screen until I'm not talking about spoilers. So I'm not very far into it. I am kind of slumping right now. I'm reading three books right now and I'm not like very into any of them, which like is a shame, but I think it's also just kind of like burnout from like residual school. Like I just finished the semester like two weeks ago and I was reading really challenging books for that. So I kind of just wanted something really easy breezy and none of the books that I'm reading right now are very easy breezy and that's like fine. But okay, we talked about the length of this book and how it's just an intimidating length and just not a good time. My thoughts on this book so far i'm not not enjoying it but i'm not like head over heels in love with it but like i am only i'm only 76 pages in i'm on chapter six right now so i don't expect to be like loving it a lot right now i don't think i loved any of the hunger games books immediately 70 pages well yeah no that's not true but like <clears throat> books like this i think they take a, a long time to get into the one thing i'm very wary of though is there seems to be this like romantic subplot happening which i am i don't think that's a spoiler it happens in like the first chapter i am not into that and it in which is weird to say because i usually ugh, why is my camera tilted i'm resting on pillows right now that's why okay let's try this which is weird because usually i love a good romance in a book what was i saying <laughs> it's not that i don't like romance in books but that does not feel like what, the, what this book should be about it's about by the way, Cori Coriolanus, I have been reading it as Cornelius this entire time. Like, I just, in this book, like, I was in, like, chapter three, and all of a sudden, I, I like, sounded it out, and I was like, that says Coriolanus, which is the hardest name to say ever, and I'm going to continue to believe it's Cornelius until I die. But if, if this turns into, like, a sappy romance, I am leaving. That is not what I'm here for. I, I really want, like, kind of, like, behind the scenes. And we're getting some of that. We're getting, like, last names that are brought up in The Hunger Games. And we're getting things like that. Some characters that are in both, like, the original series and this book, which is cool. But uh, something about this book is just not... I think it's that... I think it's that... Okay, this is, like... No, okay. So, no, it says it on, in the synopsis that his family is poor. And, like, I feel like she keeps saying that over and over again, like, twice a page. She's like, Coriolanus was... Cornelius, he's... His family is, like, really poor and he's hungry. 
oh, he looked at the food long, like, we know he's poor. <laughs> like, it, I feel like just, like, half of the, like, this could be cut down so much. Like, so much of this is unnecessary to me right now. And who knows, maybe it'll be brought up again and it'll all be relevant. But for me right now, it just feels like it's dragging. Like, I feel like nothing has happened. I don't even know if I have spoilers to discuss, honestly. I just feel like nothing has happened in the first seven chapters that is, like, couldn't have happened in, like, three chapters. So that's what, those are my feelings right now. I don't think I have anything actually spoilery to talk about. I think, like, I've said enough that people who have read, a book will, read the book will know what I mean. But I just can't imagine how this five um, nearly nearly no oh, over 500 page book like what is going to happen that is going to cause it to be 500 pages i feel like it is going to try too hard i'm not sensing right now that it's going to have a heartless plot line if you know what i mean by that where like person is good and sweet and nice some like falls in love or gets touched somebody something bad happens they turn evil i think that he always has this like really ambitious like even on the back of the book it says like ambition is his drive or something like that He's always a very ambitious person, and so I think that leads to, like, him being president and stuff. Which isn't a spoiler, because it happened in the trilogy vlog. So, that's what, those are my thoughts so far. I'm curious. I, I haven't seen anybody else's thoughts. I, I've seen, like, like on Goodreads, I haven't really been able to stay up Goodreads. <laughs> I've seen, like, peop, like ratings and stuff. I've seen, like, four-star ratings, and I've seen, like, one-star ratings. So, I'm really not- I'm really torn about, like, how I'm supposed to feel about this. Or not even how I'm supposed to feel, but, like- how other people are feeling this it's kind of like ninth house where i feel like it's just really like mixed reviews which is gonna be interesting so far i would give it like two and a half stars like for this beginning but like that's not fair because i haven't read the whole book but yeah that's all i have to say right now so i will see you when i read more so it looks like a robber <laughs> i'm wearing a hat today because i dried my hair differently and it didn't it didn't go well my dog has joined us thought my door was closed where is he hi baby are you joining us okay i can't i don't have a long time <laughs> he looks like a ghost oh my gosh that's terrifying okay When I say this isn't going well, I don't know how to... Okay, this is a long story. This is a turkey hat because it's my friend's birthday. And the only way we know how to celebrate is to wear fun hats because we're all desperate because we're all in quarantine. But now my dog is chewing on that unsaid hat and I'm not sure how to, what to do about it. Anyway, I'm gonna talk about Belt of Songbirds and Snakes while he does that. I'm on page 323, which is equivalent to the first page of part three. <sighs> Today is the 27th, if he rips my turkey hat. Okay, I have something really important to say. The quotes in the beginning, the John Locke, Thomas Hobbes, Mary Shelley quotes, I... Who... There's like so much, it's, they're so good because they're in, ingrained kind of in this, in Coriolanus's schooling, especially with Dr. Gall, how they talk about social contract. And I never realized how much enlightenment philosophy ties into the Hunger Games, the idea of like natural state and like, um, of like government and civilization. It's very, very interesting. I've studied enlightenment theory a lot, or enlightenment philosophy a lot in school and it's very very interesting in the context of the hunger games that i've actually like i would like to read like somebody should write about the the connections i gotta do this fast the connections between enlightenment philosophy and dystopian novels oh gosh okay i gotta go that's all i'm gonna say for now but yeah okay hello i'm on my floor again so I wanted to, this was probably going to be my last video for this vlog, hopefully, because <laughs> this vlog has been plaguing me. So I wanted to talk about my feelings about the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. I, I finished it, today's June 1st, but I finished it two days ago? I think the 29th I finished it, and I haven't really been up to filming recently, <laughs> but so how did I feel about it? I gave it four stars. I have a, a like pretty cohesive review on 
Goodreads up right now. If you've read it, the book there's like a spoiler section that goes into some more details i might have like a spoiler section in this video i don't really know where where i'm going with this video yet or this clip yet but basically i'm, I'm gonna summarize parts of my review because i don't really know what i'm talking about so i throughout this book i kind of had decided that it would be three stars like basically how many parts were there four the first part okay <laughs> i'm trying to figure out how to do this because i don't want it to be all spoilers but the first part of the book I was like pretty sure it was like you can see from the clips that I, I really wasn't into it the first part of the book as the book went on towards the middle like the middle section what was going on in the middle I really liked that and then the last section of the book where there was uh, I'm trying to be vague but like if you read the book I hope you know what I'm talking about in the last section of the book where that was happening I wasn't really into that either it was really like the middle chunk that I liked but then right at the end I really liked what she did at the end I liked how the book ended and like the last like couple chapters of the book I really liked. What my main thing about this book that I really like that really bolstered my is bolstered the right word like boosted I guess my love for this book was its tie-in with enlightenment philosophy. So I I'm really interested in enlightenment philosophy. I studied it extensively last semester some parts of it and especially like in like the French Revolution and also um like beginning America how like the revolutionaries were in influenced by um french philosophers and other like enlightenment philosophies and stuff like that so i was really excited when i saw the quote i was really excited when i saw the quotes at the beginning of the book that like were from <laughs> like mid philosophers i don't know why it's so hard for me to talk right now i think a lot of people were saying a lot of negative reviews about this book were basically saying it was unnecessary it was boring i wouldn't say it was necessarily necessary necessarily necessary <laughs> I think that like the Hunger Games books like were fine on their own. It was really interesting to see this different perspective and how the capital was so drastically different than what we read about in the trilogy. I think at this point I'm gonna get into spoilers but I'll have something on the screen officially when I like I'm saying spoilers and then you can just like skip ahead to when it doesn't say that on the screen. So what was really interesting to me was Coriolanus's I'm, I don't know exactly how to say his name, but that's how I'm going to go with it. I, I saw a connection between him and Victor Frankenstein, and I don't know how many of you have read Frankenstein, but basically Frankenstein is like written by Mary Shelley, obviously. It's written by a woman, but it's from a male's perspective. And because of that, we get this kind of hint that you're supposed to read against the grain. And I'm not saying that this is the case with all women who write from male narratives, but it definitely is the case with Mary Shelley. You're supposed to read against the grain of Victor Frankenstein's narrative. So when he says things like, you know, I was the best at whatever, or I was, I'm trying to think of like an actual quote from the book where, I don't know, like when um, in, I guess this is a spoiler for Frankenstein, but I don't know how much that matters to people. But basically at one point, there's an execution and this innocent girl is executed and he says that his pain is worse than hers. Like, obviously we're supposed to read against that. And there are many quotes in the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes that reminded me extensively of that kind of narrative where Coriolanus is like, oh, she's going to be so heartbroken without me. Oh, she's like, I don't know how she's going to go on without me and things like that. And I feel so bad for them that I have to leave them because they won't have my, you know, presence with them anymore and stuff like that. Like, he's constantly thinking about how much he's benefiting other people just by simply existing and like he's just very self-centered and you get that from the start of the book he's really like focuses on himself and so i saw a lot of that and i kind of got the hints like that we're supposed to read against his narrative especially at the end of the book you could see how he was like especially when like he realized that he didn't want to go like leave district 12 with lucy gray anymore you could see how he was like oh i feel so bad for her because she won't have me and stuff like that but she'll survive so the interesting thing about it was that we're kind of rooting for Coriolanus throughout the entire thing, even though it's like very apparent that he's going to be a villain and that we're not. Like certain things about him make us want to root for him in a way. We don't always agree with him, but and when I don't think we're supposed to. He's cocky and arrogant and pretentious. He's self-centered and fake. And his love for Lucy Gray is simply based off of possession, much like Victor Frankenstein's love for Elizabeth was based off of possession and physical attributes. We have to read against him to understand the other characters, the storylines, and the modes of thought. I thought him, Lucy Gray, and Sejanus were amazing characters, and Susan Collins took them through so much in the course of the book. They were given a look, that we were given a look at how their thoughts and philosophies changed and shifted throughout various experiences they encountered. The last thing I will say is Coriolanus didn't do the right thing. Okay, so this was, this was like my last thing. Okay, so 
at the end when Coriolanus sends the Jabberjay, which ends up killing Sageness. This is like huge spoilers. I hope people are listening to my spoiler warning. Coriolanus, what I thought was really interesting is he's the main character, he's the main protagonist of the book, and he didn't do the right thing. He sent the Jabberjay and it ended up Sageness being killed. He also didn't do the right thing when he like abandoned Lucy Gray. So my consumption of YA has led me to believe that the main characters of the book are bound to do the right thing. I'm reading from my review, right? that's why I'm looking down. Are bound to do the right thing and Coriolanus didn't. I think that's a powerful statement for Collins to make. Not that you shouldn't do the right thing, but that humans fluctuate and are not one dimensional. They can be selfish and twisted and wrong and still appear to be the protagonist. That was like, I thought that was really fascinating to me. And all of these like under, like between the lines philosophies and stuff like that really boosted my enjoyment of the book and I really enjoyed it and I hope that other people enjoyed it as well. I know that it is pretty controversial and there are a lot of mixed reviews but I hope that other people aren't are looking at it at a little bit of a different way than just like why is this, this is, like you know like I feel like a lot of people are just like this is boring it's unnecessary I don't want to learn about this character. I hope people are looking at it from the perspective of like this doesn't necessarily fit in with the pattern of YA books. I even thought at the beginning that it was going to be a rendition of every other YA book that I read, that there was going to be a sappy romance, that there was going to, it was going to turn out exactly like the end of Heartless. I, I had a lot of presumptions going into this book and honestly none of them were fulfilled. I think we need to take into account how unique this book actually is and even if it isn't as good as any of the Hunger Games books, which I personally don't think, even though I go with both Mockingjay and The Battle of Songbirds takes four stars, I still like Mockingjay better. I think that it's incredible how much it isn't terrible. I think that uh, a lot of times when authors came out with books 10 years after the publishing of their first book, or not their, that wasn't her first book, but like her like big, you know, what she's known for, I think it's really hard for them to live up to the expectations. And honestly, this is the first time that an author has come out with a book 10 years after their big novel trilogy series thing. Um, and I've actually enjoyed it. And so I give kudos to Susan Collins and kudos to her entire team. And honestly, I really enjoyed it. And yeah, and I, I feel kind of bad about all the things I said before because I was kind of really critical of it in the beginning. But I'm happily surprised that I enjoyed it. So, yeah. <laughs>